Hi everyone, welcome to this tutorial. It's me, Tim, from hellolux.com. And to follow along, you can visit the link in the description to download the gobos that we use. And in this tutorial, we're going to be looking at how we can set up a gobo in Cinema 4D and Redshift. And we're going to look at a few different ways of doing this. In Cinema 4D, I have some simple geometry and a dome light. And I'm going to add in an area light. Pull this up, scale it up a little bit. I'm going to pull it and align it kind of with the camera, point it down. Um, let's make it a warm orange color and come over and start the redshift render view. When it starts, we can see it's a bit overexposed. Let's lock that to the perspective view and select the area light. If we come down, we can reduce the intensity. I'm going to set that to about five for now. Rather than color, um, let's choose a texture. And click on here, I'm going to choose this leaf texture. Now we can't see anything, but what we can do is adjust this spread parameter. If we reduce this down to say 0.1, we can now see the shape of the light. So if we just readjust the um, kind of rotation and position of that, let's make that even lower, 0.01. And we're starting to see our leaves now. So I make it even lower, 0.001. And you can see they're quite visible. If we bring the light even closer to the surface, they will become sharper. So it acts like an area shadow. Let's make that a little bit bigger, pull it down, and maybe pull it back a little bit. Okay, there we go. So you can see that's basically how we can set up a gobo using a redshift area light. Definitely still too bright, so let's reduce that down to say 2 on intensity. And let's just try another image. And this time I'm going to open up the sash window sample that we offer. And you can see that now we've got a kind of window shape. So let's just scale this area light and reposition it so that the window is framed nice and clearly. Something like this. Pretty common to use a window for a gobo. Um, but what, what I want you to notice here is that we've got the intensity and the color all set on the light. But I want to show you how to layer up um, images using a redshift material light shader. So we're going to choose the physical shader for this and edit the shader graph and just drop that into your interface. At this point, we want to add the shader to the light. But before we do that, notice that we have all the parameters set on the light. And when we drop that material on there, it replaces all of the parameters like color intensity etc so we can come to the actual shader itself and change it here we can adjust the intensity and we can set that down to two again and you can see that we have a similar result but what we're actually going to do is use a texture so if we come into the espresso node graph and add in an rs texture and then link that into general color first of all it's going to not produce anything because we haven't added a texture but if we switch to the general tab, come down and let's add in that sash window texture again. And now we should be back to where we were before. And there we go. And you can see we've got the same result. But now we're doing this through the shader graph rather than directly on the light. So the color is gone um, and that's unavailable because we've wired this in. So what we need to do is add our color into the shader graph. So we'll add an RS ramp node and we'll just wire that in between. And then we can use that to basically colorize the texture that we're bringing in. So if we select that ramp, let's come to the bottom here and select this white knot. And I'm just gonna make that to be orange for now. So we've got a nice warm light. Now if we come over and select the texture itself, we can actually adjust the scale and offset, etc., within the texture tag. So if we scrub here, we can move it up and down, which is pretty useful, especially if you're gonna have multiple textures combined and that's what we're going to do so we're going to come back over select this texture tag hold control to create a copy and we're going to load that leaf texture that we had before and to combine those we're going to use a color layer so we just come over here drag the color layer in let's put this ramp into the base and the leaves as layer one move everything around a little bit so we can clearly see the leaves in the viewport. And if we select the texture, we can, and let's just make a bit more room. We can come down here and we can adjust the remapping to transform it. But before we do that, we need to select our color layer. And you can see that's currently set to normal. If we disable layer one, our window reappears. So what we want to do is just multiply that leaf texture over the top, like so. Now you can see it's quite soft. So if we come to the area light, let's come down and scroll down and adjust the spread we're just going to add a 0.5 at the end so it's very 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 small angle on there and it's not really making much difference so i think for 
sharpness we'd need to actually move it closer to the surface like so. So now once we've done that we can actually adjust the position of the leaves so that they are the scale and um, rotation etc that we want them to be depending on our scene. So that's a really simple way of combining two textures and what I'm going to do is just set the scale back to one and the offset to zero. I'm going to show you an alternative way that you can actually manipulate them and that's using the UV projection mode. Now this node doesn't produce quite the same result and I'll show you that in a minute but let's wire in the texture color and put this into layer one. You can see now that we've got a tiling projection which is flat um, so we can change the scale here. It's not quite as interactive I don't think it's um, slightly more cumbersome but it does offer a slightly alternative approach which could work for some of you. So I'm just going to change all these values until I get it more or less where I want something like so and there you go but you can see the problem with this I'm not sure if you're you can see it but if we actually zoom in the UV projection doesn't take the distance into account so the gobo stays really sharp now that might actually be something that you want but if we just wire the texture straight in without that you can see the difference and the leaves and the window frame are totally blurred but perhaps you'd want the window frame to be sharp and the leaves blurred or whatever so that projection node does certainly have some creative uses Okay, just going to switch over to a new scene and here we're going to take a look at how you can use footage or an animated gobo. So I've got this set up, I've got a light in here, we're just going to come down and load in a texture. Now there is a bit of a gotcha here. Um, you don't want to be loading in something like an MP4, it's just going to give you problems. It may work, it may not, but because of the intra frames, etc, it won't have all of the correct information. But if you fold this little arrow down um, and come to the animation button here and then you can see that we've got a few options for the mode, we can loop, ping pong. Um, let's just leave it on simple. Um, down here you can choose detect frames and you can see it hasn't worked. It's just done naught to naught. You could try manually inputting that. Um, but what I'm going to do and what I suggest is to use an image sequence. And we did supply one with the sample. So let's load that in and you can see we've got 125 frames. With the actual product we sell, they are 500 frames long. So this is just a little sample of one of the clips. If we open that up and bring it in and now switch back to animation, we're going to leave it on simple. You can adjust the timing and select a range etc but let's leave it on just the basic frames make sure you set the frame rate and now that should work so if we come over start the redshift render view and there we go you can see that that's working fine if we scrub through although it won't update particularly quickly because they are quite large images you can see that it's definitely moving around so when you're using things like a tree in your shots Moving trees really do add an extra sense of depth and realism. You can always rotate this a little bit more so that the top is closer and then the bottom becomes a bit more blurred, just so it gives that sort of idea that the light is coming in at an angle. So that's how you can use an animation or some footage as a gobo. So we're in a totally different scene. We've got two area lights that have the visible enabled we switch one off you can see the blue has disappeared we've got a blue and a pink light and what we're going to do rather than use texture we're going to use the opacity texture and this actually will change the opacity of the visible light so it has some kind of interesting uses as well and what I've done is I've taken the leaves that we were using before and I've just inverted it so the gobo is the other way around and if we just drop that into the opacity texture you can immediately see the result in the render view and we get this really cool cutout stencil so let's do the same on the pink light, but this time I'm going to choose um, a different material. This one of this shrub growing upwards. Let's drop that on. So it is a really, really basic example, but it just shows you if you think about how to use these in a slightly different way, then you can come up with some more interesting creative uses. If you use Houdini, please check out our channel. There is a tutorial very similar to this, but it shows you how to set this up in Redshift in Houdini and also using Karma. And while you're there, why not subscribe? So please don't forget that if you look in the description, there is a link to a sample pack of gobos that we offer on hollolux.com. And while you're there, please check out our gobo collections.